Today is Vision Sunday. Come on, somebody. It's Vision Sunday. You know what vision does? Vision encourages you to not just talk about something, to put, put, to put action steps moving forward, right? And when something happens in your life and you encounter a difficult situation, you encounter a trial, it gives you the ability to overcome that trial because you're able to fix your eyes on the vision that God has given you for your life individually or over an organization. Proverbs says this about vision, Proverbs 29, 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Now I wanna read to you now the, the passion translation of this verse. Now, don't be religious and say, ah, that's, that's, not, uh, that's not the New King James Version or the King James Version. Receive this. This is so good how it's written. It says this, when there is no clear prophetic vision, people quickly wander astray. But when you follow the revelation of the word, I love this, heaven's bliss fills your soul. Heaven's bliss fills your soul. When you follow the revelation of the word, heaven's bliss fills your soul. I believe when we step into this vision that we're talking about this morning as a church family, that God will bring about supernatural multiplication in your life personally, but also in the life of this church corporately. So the title of my message in the vision for 2023, if you haven't noticed from the t-shirts or uh, the muralist on the wall out there is this. It's supernatural multiplication. I believe that 2023 is going to be a year of supernatural multiplication in the life of this church and in your life personally. Amen. Let's, uh, let's read the text for today. It's found in John chapter 6. This is a, uh, the, the story of Jesus multiplying the fish and the loaves and feeding the 5,000. Verse 1, it says, after these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Then a great multitude followed him because they saw his signs, which he performed on those who were diseased. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover of a feast of the Jews was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes, and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test him. For he himself knew what he would do. Verse 7. Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves, a young boy who has five barley loaves and two small fish. But what are they among so many? Then Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was... Much grass in the place of the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples, and the disciples to those sitting down, and likewise of the fish, as much as they wanted. As much as they wanted. There was an increase. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. Therefore they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which were left over by those who had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, this is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, as we look at this today, God, where you multiplied supernaturally these five loaves and two fish. God, I pray that you would speak to our hearts, every single person in this room. We open ourselves up to you. We ask that God today, the Lord, we just pray the same prayer, God, of that young boy. Lord, would you speak for your servants are listening? Lord, speak to us today for your servants are listening. God, teach us your ways, for we want to know you. We want to find favor with you. So God, I pray that we open up your word today. You would make your logos word, God, your written word become rhema to us, God. Let it be alive and let it be working. 
We bless you. We thank you. We love you. And everyone said amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Wesley. Appreciate it, buddy. Last year in September, uh, it was one of the, the first weekends where it was the first cold front that came through after this long Florida summer. I don't know about you, but with that first cold front that comes through after the long summer, it's just like, oh my goodness, that is just absolutely incredible and that is absolutely amazing. I feel Jesus in that. Anyone else just feel that? Some of you snowbirds from up north, you're like, no, nah, I don't want any of that cold weather. Even this right now is too cold for me. But it's the first cold weather, and for being here in Florida, I'm like, man, thank goodness for the break, finally. And so I decided, because of that, to take my devotions outside that morning to experience this cold weather, and I took a blanket out there, and I began to read and began to pray. And as I was reading, I came across in my devotion Psalm 107.38. And I read this, it says, by his blessing, they multiply greatly. By his blessing, they multiply greatly. And I heard the Holy Spirit right there in that moment speak to me and say, 2023 is going to be a year where I multiply greatly. It's going to be a year of multiplication, not just for you personally, but for Journey Church. But how many of you know when you receive a Lord from the Lord, you're looking for confirmation along the way, right? Was that just the taco ate the night before, the pizza ate night the night before, or just the feeling of the cold weather that morning because I was feeling good? I was looking for confirmation, so I said, okay, Lord, I really feel like I heard from you, but Lord, would you bring confirmation? So that morning, uh, Pastor Joey, my friend, he, he began to pray as we were in staff meeting that morning, Lord, would you multiply greatly at Journey Church? And I was like, Lord, that, you know how when he just brings uh, uh, confirmation of the word he's giving you? He's like, Lord, that is it. I hit him after he prayed. I'm like, bro, I just heard the Lord speak to me this morning that he's going to bring supernatural multiplication to journey, and you just confirmed that in my life. I was like, man, God is so good. But again, two weeks later, we go to... Um, uh, a man church in the, in the back, we were holding it, and, and Rob was bringing the word. And that word that morning was on multiplication. We begin to read a book as elders and staff on multiplication as well. There's like all these things in this short period of time was confirmation of what God was speaking to me about him bringing supernatural multiplication this year in 2023. But when you look at this psalm, Psalm 107, 38, by his blessing, he'll multiply greatly. If you continue to read on, you know why he brings blessing? It's because when you're openly available to give it away, and he does it for the poor, the needy, the least of these. He does it for the people who do not know him. He does it for the people outside of these four walls. That's why he wants to bring multiplication to us personally and in this church, because he's calling us to steward it. We are to steward what he has given us. Amen? We're supposed to give it away. Let me be clear about this. We don't build the church. We don't bring the kingdom. We bear witness in word and deed by the power of the Holy Spirit to Jesus, who is the church builder, who is the kingdom bringer. So we partner with the Holy Spirit that lives within us through Jesus to build his kingdom. It is never going to be us. It's never going to be something that we do. It is always going to be him. We don't bring the kingdom. He brings it as we partner with him. And he does his will in his way. And sometimes his will in his way is beyond anything that we could ever ask or think. It's, he moves in ways that are mysterious. He moves in ways that we don't really sometimes fully understand. And that's why I believe, you might be saying, Adam, why is, it just, why is it supernatural multiplication, the vision for this year, and not just multiplication? Because if it was just multiplication, it would mean that we had something to do with it. We can't do it out of our own ability, out of our own might. It's only through partnering with the Holy Spirit, and then the Holy Spirit brings the multiplication. That is why it's supernatural. It has nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with him. And so we lean into the Lord and allow him to bring the multiplication. We read it uh, two weeks ago. I read a scripture about how 
What the Lord is looking after, the people who he's giving favor towards are those who have a contrite spirit, a humble heart, and who those who fear the word of the Lord. What we do is we have a humble heart chasing after the Lord with a contrite spirit, and we fear the word of the Lord. We're digging into the word of the Lord, and then what happens is he brings the multiplication. Think about this for the moment, the story of the 5,000. Jesus took those two fish, five loaves, and he multiplied it for 5,000 people. And it was this young boy who had these five loaves and two fish. Do you think that if an adult had five loaves and two fish, that they would probably hold on to it and say, listen, this is for me, I'm holding it tight. But this boy had enough childlike faith to give it away to the Lord and allow him to multiply it. But even this, Jesus led this 5,000 people to a place of hunger and desperation. They were too far to go back home. They had journeyed too far from their home, and if they were trying to walk back to a place where they could find food, many of them might have fainted. So Jesus led them to a place of hunger and desperation where the people had to rely on him. And then what would Jesus do in the end? He would multiply the two fish and the five loaves and he would do a miracle. Listen, you might be in a place right now of hunger and desperation. And maybe, just maybe, God has led you to that place so you would learn to rely on him and then you can see a miracle because Jesus wants to do a miracle of multiplication in your life. What I believe in this room is Jesus, God, the Spirit of God has stirred this hunger and desperation for more of him in our lives. Do you, do you sense, is anybody hungry and desperate for more of God? He leads us to a place to realize, man, Lord, I am nothing without you. Lord, I have to have you. Lord, I can't move on. I can't go without you. It's like Moses, Lord, I'm not, I'm not leaving this point. I'd rather be in the desert than go into the promised land. I'd rather be in the desert with your presence than going to the promised land where you're not. And he says, Lord, I, I'm not going up to be here for without you. He's led us to this place of desperation, a place of hunger here at Journey where our only desire is just him. And what he's going to do with our hunger and with our desire and our desperation is he's going to come in. He's going to bring supernatural multiplication just like he multiplied the, the two fish and the five loaves. Amen. I was sharing this vision of supernatural multiplication uh, with the staff shortly after I heard this word from the Lord and I got confirmation at one of our meetings and uh, Annalise, our kids director, she does an amazing job back there, but she says, uh, I was doing division with one of my kids last night and I was talking with them how division uh, is the opposite of multiplication. And she said this, this reminds me that we're not going to see multiplication if we're divided. You see, division will stifle the presence of God. Division will stifle supernatural multiplication in our life. If we don't come together in unity with one body and encourage and love one another well, we will never see supernatural multiplication in our generation. I was in a trustee meeting uh, a week ago today after, after, church, after church and we were uh, talking and the Lord just kind of reminded me in the meeting as we were talking and discussing things that, I mean, we're all created differently. The way you encounter God is different than the way I encounter God. I encounter God through worship. I encounter God through fasting. It doesn't make me more spiritual than you at all. Some of you encounter God through serving. Some of you encounter God uh, through nature. It doesn't mean I'm better than you or you're better than me. We just all encounter God differently. That's why we're walking into this next season as well. We all have different gifts of the Spirit that we can walk in. There's only one person who walked in all nine gifts, and that is Jesus himself. But we all have individual gifts that God has given us. Why? For the building up of the body of Christ. They're to be used within the context of, uh, of, uh, of, a, of a church, of a church family, for the building up of that body of believers. And so each and every one of you have a different gift to be used for the glory of God. But often what happens is we begin to compare the way you encounter God with someone else in our life or the way you 
your spiritual gifting with someone else's spiritual gifting, and this spirit of comparison becomes all over us, and what happens is it breaks unity, and we don't even realize it. Because we're constantly comparing our lives with someone else. And what happens with that too is there's this insecurity that begins to come over us. But church, we're not going to allow insecurity. We're not going to allow division. We're going to walk in unity, encouraging one another to walk in their own individual gifts, encouraging one another into how they encounter God, not thinking that we're better than one another. We're going to walk in unity. And what I believe is as we walk in unity, we will see Psalm 27. The very end of that psalm, verse 13, says, to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I believe this year is going to be a year of supernatural multiplication where we see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I want to give you now three ways that we're going to see supernatural multiplication from John 6 and this miracle of uh, multiplication of these two fish and five loaves and feeding the 5,000. Number one, God is calling us to supernatural multiplication through prayer. God is calling us to supernatural multiplication through prayer. Jesus prayed over the fish and the loaves before he supernaturally multiplied it for the multitude. John 6, 11. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples. Listen, we said this in our last series during the Revival Ready series, that sustained prayer will bring sustained revival. Sustained prayer will bring sustained revival. We talked about how the Lord demanded that his church, his house, be called a house of prayer. That it was a call for us to get back to the simplicity of just gathering around him through prayer. That God is calling us to be this house of prayer. And then the Lord is going to add the increase. And so practically speaking, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this point because uh, we spent the first two weeks of the year uh, on the 8th and the 15th on this topic of prayer. So if you missed those, t- those two weeks, go back and listen to those. But practically speaking, how do we live this out? What does it look like for, here, for us here at Journey? Well, we started Wednesday night prayer nights. And it's just such a simple, easy night. There's no flashiness to it whatsoever. We just come in this room, we gather, we worship, and we pray. That's it. Nothing more to it. Uh, it's just an acoustic guitar. It's just us coming together, praying and seeking the Lord and praying through things, partnering with one another to see God move. So we added a Wednesday night prayer night. We have Saturday morning prayer every single Saturday morning at 8 a.m. here. encourage you to come out for that. Uh, Also Sunday mornings, 9 a.m., is pre-service prayer for our first service. We've also added a second service, pre-service prayer. If you decide to come to second service at any point, you can join in for pre-service prayer at 11 a.m. for second service. We added that as well. We also have encounter nights, which if you were here at encounter night last night, it's a, it's, a, it's a worship night. But man, if you don't know about encounter nights, we pray on those nights as well. And if you missed last night, I encourage you to come out for the next one. We're talking about even adding more, more frequently. I don't know what that looks like quite yet, but we're praying through that. Maybe God will add us to, uh, call us to add uh, to it uh, more than just once a quarter to do it, maybe once a month or something like that. We're praying through that if the Lord would do that, but I believe that maybe perhaps he is. We need more confirmation with our leadership team for, for that to happen, but I believe that might be where God is leading us to do it. But we literally, God's calling us to be a house of prayer. We're going to see supernatural multiplication through us being a house of prayer. The second thing I want to give you this morning is that God is calling us to supernatural multiplication through missions. Through missions. In Matthew's account of feeding the 5,000, we read John's account earlier. And actually, this encounter of feeding the 5,000, it's the only miracle that occurs in all four of the Gospels. And so in Matthew's account, it says this, Matthew 14, 14. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. You see, there will not be supernatural multiplication without a heart for Compassion, a compassionate heart, a heart of compassion. Why would God bless someone who is not willing to give it away? 
If we hold on to what God gives us and not steward it and give it away to others, whether it's the presence of God, whether it's any resources, our time, our treasure, our talents, if we're not willing to give it away, why would God bless us or multiply anything? What do we have to do? We have to give it away. We have a, uh, Pastor Eric says this a lot, you got to give it away to keep it. It's one of our values here, generosity. We've got to give it away to keep it. The Bible says, freely you receive, now freely you give. What the Lord is calling us to do is to steward every single resource that he's given us personally and corporately as a church, to be, have an open hand and to give it away. So what does this look like for us practically here at Journey? To give of our time, our treasure, and our talents. Let's talk about locally. What does this look like? Locally, we will continue partnerships with other organizations making an impact in our region, like Mercy Support Services, First Coast Women's Services, Seagmart Ranch, Hunger Fight, which is going to be a new partnership. They they provide food for uh, for local families who are struggling to to eat. Uh, also through uh, partnering with foster families. Another practical way that we uh, have here at Journey is through Journey Out. How many people are part of Journey Out? Incredible ministry. Come on, somebody. Yep. So we continue Journey Out, which meets the third Saturday of the month and gives clothing and other items away to help those who are in need. They're beginning to do food as well. And let me just speak to this for a moment, because I believe that the Lord is kind of positioning us, begin to dream and to think how we can also have a food initiative uh, here at Journey. I believe the Lord is going to open the door. And honestly, right now, if you were to look at the climate of uh, different uh, food initiative organizations, uh, there's not really a huge need currently right now. But what I believe is that there's going to come a time in our generation We've got to position ourselves to be able to feed people because there's going to come a time where because we've violated the laws of the word of God, we've printed money, that there's going to be more need here locally. So we've got to be thinking ahead of the future what the Lord is calling us into. So I believe that somewhere down the road, the Lord is going to call us to have a food drive initiative. We're also uh, going to be partnering with Mercy Support again to adopt a family, adopt a home here locally, just to love on them, to help them, to give them a, a food once a month and to help with any needs that they might have. So we're, that's going to be a new partnership uh, with adopting a home. Also, our small group this next semester, we're encouraging each small group uh, to have a, uh, a missions outreach, and you guys decide on what you're going to do. Uh, small groups are starting up in the next couple of weeks, and so every single small group, they're going to identify a time, a day, or they're just going to go out and be the hands and feet of Jesus to this community. Amen? So church, let's be the hands and feet of Jesus in our neighborhoods here locally, but what does this look like? Abroad. What does this look like for overseas missions? We'll continue partnerships with overseas missions organizations that feed the hungry, provide water wells in Africa. Pastor Eric has already identified uh, areas that need water wells. We're going to partner with him and uh, his organization that he's created called the Least of These to, uh, to provide water wells in Africa. Uh, we're going to be supporting orphanages as well that are overseas. There are many people here at Journey that have a desire on their heart to go out and do missions trips. And this is my attitude towards uh, others who call Journey their home, who have a a calling that God has placed in their heart to go do missions. Listen, it's, it's your ministry, but we're here, and my motto is this, just like Home Depot, you can do it, and how can we help? right? You can do it, and how can we help? God has placed a vision on you. We're not trying to control it. We just want you to go out and to be blessed and make a difference of whatever the Lord is calling you into. We want to be a house that houses vision. Amen? Whatever the Lord is, I believe that the Lord is even calling people even right now. How can I go out and make a difference in our local community? Just as you were partnering with us, we want to partner with you and see God make a difference in the world. I, um, I was reading uh, a book called Prayag Balo back last year. And it's about outreach. It's about missions. And the Lord just laid on my heart. It's talking about a Joshua project, which identifies um, people who never heard the gospel, who never heard uh, about the Lord ever before, like literally have never heard about Jesus, never had a Bible, nothing like that. And the Lord just laid on my heart to look up 
uh, where in Guyana are tribes and people who live in the jungle who have never heard the gospel. And so I looked it up, and there's two different tribes in Guyana who have never heard the gospel before. You know, I'm just crazy enough to believe that God could do something here through us where we could bring the gospel to those tribes in Guyana who have never heard it. We have different partnerships and churches locally in Guyana that we're looking to partner with and to invest in to help go see these tribes be reached for the gospel to hear about Jesus for the first time ever. Uh, Bishop, he's not here this morning, but Bishop, he's going next month uh, to Guyana to begin this process of partnering with churches and partner with people locally there so that we can get the resources in people's hands and we can also go into the jungles and to, 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 to tell people, I don't know if it fires you up like it fires up me, but tell people who've literally never heard about Jesus, about the Savior of the King of the world. And so, man, he's going to go to start building his relationships, and I believe that, it, man, God is going to do it in this time in our generation to see people come to Jesus in these tribes who have never heard about Jesus. We're going to be planning a missions trip as well to Guyana in August, so be a little on the lookout for that. We'll be getting you information. Uh, late last year, we had a organization come here to the church called Waymaker, and what they do is they uh, provide software uh, to churches to help track their missions and their outreaches. So I want to show you a couple slides right now. If you want to put it on the screen, put the first one up on the screen if you would. Is that working? Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Maybe I delete the background. I'm not sure. Well, you saw it there for a moment. I'll move on. So let me just explain to you what's going to happen. It's really, really cool. So there is, uh, hey, all right. So we have a map here of the entire world. What happens, I don't know if you can see it, but there's two different um, icons. Here in the bottom right-hand corner, uh, there's an icon of, like, it looks like a church. There's also one over here in Jacksonville, looks like a heart. And everywhere that we go, everything that we do, we're able to track what the Lord has done through the people of Journey here. Go to the next slide. Next slide. So here's Jacksonville. This is what Journey Out, we've only got one week of data so far. This is what Journey Out did this past, past week. Um, and that's just the icon there. Go to the next slide. Here's where Bishop was this past year in Africa. Go to the next slide. So when he went to Africa, it'll pop up as we put the data in. Bishop preached the gospel. 25 made a decision to follow Christ. How cool is that? Go over uh, next slide. So here's pictures of that service that he was at, he ministered to. Go to the next slide. So now this is here locally through Journey Out. 15 were in t attendance, five made a decision to follow Christ. Come on, somebody. Let's go to the next slide now. Here's pictures of Journey Out. So what happens, I don't know if you can see here in the bottom left-hand corner. Street ministry, so through Journey Out, 15 were in attendance so far. Five people gave their heart to Jesus. Just imagine, just think from, with me for a moment. As we go out to our community here locally, we're going to see all these different hearts pop up all over this map. We're going to be able to see where we've been, but then also keep track of the salvations that have happened and the number of lives that we've touched, the number of lives we've prayed for, the number of people who've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the number of people who've received clothing and help in their time of need. And what this is going to do is going to allow us to better steward the resources of what God has given us. And so then you have in services down here, we're able to track over, year, imagine a year down the road, imagine two years down the road, imagine three years down the road, being able to track 25 people were saved through the ministry of us just going overseas and holding a service and seeing all these thousands of lives giving their life to Jesus through our local community.
So I wanna, I'm going to figure out a way of how to put this in the lobby so we can keep it in front of us. But I believe that the Lord is going to bring supernatural multiplication this next year as we steward the resources of what God has given us. We begin to celebrate every salvation, every life that's changed, every person has been impacted through the community. It's not about us keeping track and saying, hey, aren't we so great? No, that's not the purpose of it. It's to encourage us and to say, man, this is where we've been. We need to go here now. We need to do this now. It's for us to be strategic in the resources and our time that God has given us. Anybody just say, man, God is so good. That is so incredible. I cannot wait to see God make an impact. So number three this morning, God is calling us to supernatural multiplication through reaching the next generation. He's calling us to supernatural multiplication through reaching the next generation. John 6 Verse 9, it says this, there is a lad, there's a young boy here, who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many? So a young boy with childlike faith gives up his food so that Jesus can come and supernaturally multiply it for the multitude. May I suggest that the greatest asset of the church today is our young people? That often throughout church history, the greatest revival started with the young people. Church, there is no junior Holy Spirit. They have the same Holy Spirit that lives within us, inside of them. And the enemy is trying to take out this next generation, but we will draw a line in the sand and tell them, enemy, you cannot have our kids. Our kids and this next generation is the Lord's and the Lord's only. And what I believe is that the Lord is raising up an army in this next generation, but it won't just happen through happenstance. It won't just happen because we clap and cheer, but it will happen when we begin to invest in the next generation with our resources and spiritually through serving and through prayer. Think about this. God is a generational God. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Laura and I had dinner with, with Pastor Eric and Mary Jo back in May before we had this uh, the transition that happened in June, this pastoral transition. And Pastor Eric, he said something to me. I probably don't even remember saying this, but it stuck with me ever since. He said, Adam, you need to begin to think now about how you're going to pass it on to the next generation. And not only that, but you need to pass it off earlier than what you really think that you should. Where is Journey going to be 20 years from now? Where is Journey going to be 50 years from now? I believe this is a generational ministry, that we're carrying on the legacy of our founding pastors They started this ministry 15 years ago, and we're going to carry this ministry on another 15 years, another 15 years after that, another 15 years after that, another 15 years after that, long after I'm gone, long after you're gone, I believe. Should God tarry? Should God not wait to come back? We're setting what I believe this ministry up to be a generational ministry. So what does this look like for us? First off, let me read some scripture to you. Uh, Joel 1.3 Tell your children of it. Let your children tell their children and their children to another generation. Proverbs 13, 22, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Psalm 145, 4, one generation shall commend your works to another. One translation says this, one generation shall shout, shall shout your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. So two very simple, two very strategic Things, practical things that we can begin to do in multiplying through this next generation. The first one I want to give you is this. We're starting a building fund. We're starting a building fund. Now, this facility right now, it's under lease. And so we have a lease that we pay on every single month. And I believe God will allow us one day to purchase this building or another building that's comparable like this, completely 100% debt-free, amen? 100% debt-free. I believe that God wants to use Journey to impact our children's children, and that this is a generational ministry. So I challenge you, begin to pray. Begin to ask the Lord, Lord, what would you have me give over 
and above my tithe to invest in this next generation. Because it's not about me, it's not about you. It's about the Lord and what he wants to do and how he wants to set us up as we steward the resources he's given us to buy a facility that's a completely 100% debt free. Let me also say this, our leaders here at Journey are giving towards this as well. It starts from the top down. I'm not gonna ask you to do this without me personally doing it as well. Laura and I, we're praying, Lord, what do, you, what do you want us to give over and above our tithe, God, to see this next generation have a building that's completely 100% debt free. We're able to do more work with the ministry because we don't have that lease hanging over us anymore. And so what does this look like? When you, when you go to give online, you can just simply, uh, it has general fund, but also if you hit the button, you'll have a, a tab where you can, uh, where it says uh, building fund. All you'd simply do is just select to give towards the building fund and those funds will be used towards uh, the next generation in a future building that we believe is gonna be debt free. The second practical step for supernatural multiplication through this next generation. How many believe, just for a moment, let me pause before I give you a second one. How many of you believe that the Lord is going to give us a facility 100% debt free? Come on, somebody. Come on, he can do it. He can do it. He can do it, and he can do it as we are people of action. Here's a number, number two thing of the opportunity that's in front of us. We have an incredible opportunity to serve in kids and youth ministry. You know, we all want the next generation to thrive, don't we? I don't think there's any a person in this room who say, I, I don't care about the next generation, I don't want them to thrive. But sometimes not all of us are willing to do the work to see them thrive. We have Serve Fair today, and we're encouraging you, I'm encouraging you this morning to find a place where you can use your talents and gifts for the glory of God. Maybe God right now is just speaking to your heart and saying, you need to go serve in youth ministry. You need to go serve in kids ministry. You get to invest spiritually into a kid's life and their life being impacted forever. Just think about that. You have the opportunity to serve in kids ministry and to invest in these kids spiritually and their life be forever impacted. Maybe in this room right now, God's calling you to do that. You know, in Matthew 9, it says, for the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. May we respond by giving all of who we are to serve his kingdom, not journey. You're not serving journey, you're serving the kingdom of God and his kingdom alone. You know, I had a prophetic word given to me back about two years ago. And what they told me is that God was bringing people who are ready for battle, people who, who are, and he's raising up an army here at Journey who are coming here, who are ready for battle, who are ready to get plugged in and to see this vision to build a community of people's life around the presence of God come to fruition and he's sending people to do it. I believe that he's sent people even now who come in this past year and he's calling us to step at the plate, to put action to our words. My prayer is this, that God would move in such a way that only he can receive the glory. That God would move in your life in such a way that only he can receive the glory. People be like, man, there's no way Adam could have done that. <laughs> the only logical explanation is God did that. People would say, man, there's no way God moved it, uh, that, that any, any person had something to do with God moving that way or something happening at Journey like that. Only God could have done that. May God move in such a way here at the church and in you personally where people will say, only God can do that. So our vision for this year what I believe the Lord is calling us to do, what I believe the Lord is calling us into is supernatural multiplication. He's going to do it through prayer. He's going to do it through missions. And he's going to do it through this next generation. Would you pray with me? Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? Lord, I thank you for every person in this room, God. God, I thank you for the warriors.